So here's something I've been thinking about. I had the idea that if you burn something down, you reduce it into its ash. It's its physical raw state. This is essentially true for just about anything you would assume. Usually you powder it and you burn it, right? Next, if you were to break things into two, so if you distilled something, you sublimated it, mean, meaning you put it in a vessel, like a container, and you heated it, and the vapors rose into like a tube, and then they recondensed into another vi uh, vessel, you would have all of the liquid and oily components. So then we can have two things. We have two containers, one full of the non-organic, the physical solids, and then one full of the organic the liquids and oils and such. This is breaking into two. Of course, you could re-distill the like, liquids and oils you get into the liquids and the oils, making it have three. And you can then re-distill it into four, which is the volatile vaporous spirits like alcohol, uh, sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, etc. Water, and then resinous oils and of course the, the last one is the physical you know the minerals the ash etc so this is how you continually break things up into more and more parts right now there's an idea in chemistry of organic and non-organic chemicals and non-organic chemicals you can think are metallic and semi-metallic based so, iron is a non-organic chemical, and the oxide of iron, which is gotten from calcining it, heating it, is non-organic, even though it's got an oxygen in it. The chloride of iron is non-organic, etc. So things like carbonous chloride, you know, all these other types of things, they are still non-organic, technically. The organic is usually a hydrogen or carbon bonded molecule. And carbon is the archetypal earth, the archetypal physical chemical. If you burn things, what you get, if you burn things without air, meaning you do it in a closed container, they will become black charcoal. The same like charcoal is you burn things without oxygen and eventually you snuff the flame stop it from burning down too much right you get this charcoal and from it so you can split the charcoal or you can burn the charcoal off into i imagine carbon dioxide so like a carbonous vapor and then you get the minerals right hydrogen of course is the archetypal water it's it's very interesting though hydrogen because it is the first element is you know they talk about the dark seas all things come from the primordial ocean uh the idea of you know hydrogen being out in space and all these kinds of things right it's it's also you know it's, it's a it's a colorless flammable gas i'm not sure if it has a flavor it would be very interesting to smell it or to taste it um it would tell you a lot of things but it is you, know, you get it from electrolysis of water which is where you use electricity, basically run electricity through water to split it up with the oxygen, hydrogen. But um, I see hydrogen as the archetypal water because, of course, water is H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen, which I assume just means you get twice as much hydrogen gas from electrolyzing the water as you do oxygen in probably, I don't know, weight or... Somehow they work out molecular quantities or something. You know, again, when you get too far into the chemical language, you, we get distracted from reality. So we have to be a little more careful, <laughs> try to keep things physical. But the point being is that you've got these two classes of chemicals and you can break things down into their two classes just through this process of traditional alchemical sublimation or distillation which as I said, is simply just heating a substance, your first material, whatever your primary material, heating it up in the distiller, and then eventually you will get it to a 
an ash, you know, if you, if you calcite it. Chances are, depending on the distil distillery equipment, you'll get to a black coal, and then you'll have to, you know, sublimate further. But um, then going on, you then have your other organic component, which is the, the oils and also the... So the, the volatile spirits are... I'm not sure if they would... If they would be considered a organic chemical, you know, al alcohol, I'm pretty sure alcohol has a carbon, it's like carbon, nitrogen, hyd hydrogen. Yeah, it's got a hydroxyl, and a negative OH by the looks of it. So alcohols, I guess you could consider organic in that sense. So we can really see that we are splitting things up into, you know, everything is orderly in a way. As long as you have the mind to see it, everything is, um, you can split things up into categories and that's what we're doing. We're splitting things up into physical and I guess technically it's still physical. A resinous oil is still physical, but it's like stuff that will, that will um, sublimate, that will turn to a gas, that will turn to a spiritual form and things that will not turn to a spiritual form. And then of course you're doing other processes with it, but the idea I just want you to get in your mind is that this is kind of the, the raw basics of you know, ref like separating things, refining things into their forms, and you know, it just gets your eye, your mind into this idea of like organic stuff and non-organic stuff. Like if you if you grab some soil, the soil has organic chemicals in it, and it has non-organic chemicals. You know, there's bacteria, dead plant matter, and dead animal matter, and all kinds of stuff. And then but then there is like the silicon dioxide and there is the you know, all these these rocks and minerals and and um you know, illuminates and things around right? ions and, and electrolytes and carbonates and whatever else in the soil so there's these is this duality the duality of chemistry is organic and non-organic and i guess everything's kind of made from both these things usually like a living a body a plant has minerals and it also has non-organic stuff like the majority of your body is just water and carbon i guess if you want to talk about it chemically it's that black char charcoal stuff and it's like water to kind of buffer it out right so like proteins you break proteins into what well, mostly nitrogens and such like it's got a lot of that in there as well so anyway something to think about one important thing if you do a lot of things you're going to fail that's just like like life that's how things work because if you don't know how to do something you know you can have mistakes or fail or whatever and the more stuff you do the better you do you get at just doing general things for example if you learn how to cook uh and then you go to do woodworking cooking and woodworking have essentially you would think no relations and I'm not going to sit here and tell you they do um, and that, you know, there's some profound relation to it. There's a lot more relation between maybe working with bricks or metal and working with wood than there is cooking and working with wood. But if you had learned cooking, you got better at learning the skill, right? You got better at life itself. It's a bit like I, in the last maybe year or so, have gotten really good at looking at measurements of things online like you buy something online and you think oh geez that wasn't what i wanted you know that's tiny and then you look at the price tag and you think well yeah no <laughs> that's probably why but when you just say i've been looking at like bolts and screws and all these things and you have to be hyper precise on the measurement down to the millimeter same thing if you do 3D printing and all that stuff right so i've gotten really good at that and that's transferred over to like everything so that is one transferable thing. Um, and the reason why it was, I don't, I don't want to say it was easy to learn that, but the reason why I was able to learn that is because I've learned so many other things to the point where it's like, okay, you know, just grind it out, just learn it, just do it. So getting back, if you learn to cook pretty well, you would remember the same process as like, oh yeah, I looked up a bunch of videos, I read a bunch of stuff, I had to buy all this stuff, I had to look at the, all these specific things and you kind of figure it out with woodworking, right? And who knows, maybe if you get really professional at your cuts, you know, the way you cut vegetables, like professionally for a restaurant, uh, it would be similar to woodworking, the way that you cut wood. You know, maybe you could relate things, but the you know, point being is that uh, you know, the more you learn, the better you get at it, right? Simple. And... Failure is, it's like a stairs. You know, 
Life is a spiral staircase upwards. Each step is a failure. Eventually you get off the spiral staircase at a floor, you plateau and you kind of rest there, you enjoy yourself a little bit, right? And then you get back on and you keep going up the stairs. Now sometimes it feels like an escalator going downwards, you know, one of those automatic stairs and you're trying to go up it, but it's trying to go down. <laughs> Life feels a little bit like that as well. Um, but the point being is you have to change your relationship to failure. You have to become comfortable with failure. The best way to describe it. Now, you shouldn't ever have a self-defeating attitude uh, where you accept that, oh, it's like, oh, I'm a failure. You know, I'm just, all oh, my life is fail. You know, um, look, we've all kind of been there maybe, especially if you've had a lot of failure. Like, I've had a lot of failure in my life. You know, I'm a person who... Um, I chased my dreams for years and I failed. You know, that's just straight up. I failed to succeed. And because of that, I learned a lot. I learned what it takes to succeed. You look at videos, especially on like YouTube or social media, you see these people as like an artist or a musician or like a, like a business person, entrepreneur. And they're like, yeah, I chased my dreams and it was difficult. And I finally got it. It's like, I did that and I failed. Yeah, and I'm not talking about like, I just did it for like, yeah, I mean, I did it for years and years and years and failed. And ultimately, if you're willing to keep going, you will succeed. You know, eventually, I will succeed at certain things that I wanted to succeed at when I was younger. But it's just like, I don't really have the time for that right now or the money. Um, you know, if you have the money to sit around and not work, have to work a job that takes all your time or you don't have to have all these responsibilities, you can practice things. You can get good at things. And you can, you know, um, of course, sometimes having the responsibilities kind of straightens you out and actually helps you uh, to become a more balanced person because you know, you've got to ask, what is success? What does it mean to you to be a little abstract? Usually you would think success is making money off something, succeeding in life off something. And that means, you know, finding a marriage partner, uh, making money, being able to do what you want, where you want, when you want, you know, all these kinds of things, right? However you want to do it. That's, you know, that's a form of success, I would say. But also, when I would make music when I was young, my music was somewhat abstract and unnatural because I was abstract and unnatural i was very uh, i lacked roundedness let's say i lacked um if you, if you listen to mainstream music it is nothing but roundedness it is nothing but mundane genericness <clears throat> it's simple it is simple it is there to sell uh it's meant to be catchy it's meant to be you know just something nice right my music was kind of the opposite of that it was like complicated and it was otherworldly and extreme you know <laughs> maybe i'll add maybe i'll put a piece here just to you know just to show you right that'd be fun Some other cool bits. Let me try to find them.
Yeah, there's some pretty wild parts of those, eh?
point being is that as I became healthier, my music became healthier, but also became a bit more generic. It wasn't as like wild and extreme and crazy and like all this kind of stuff. And I look back on some of my music and think, wow, that's me. I did that. That's full on. Now I listen to it and I love it. I think it's, it's insane. There's nothing like uh, the stuff you make yourself. You know, there's nothing like homemade stuff. Of course, the stuff other people make is nice, but there's a nice feeling from homemade stuff. It's like they say, the most priceless meal is um, a meal made by you know your mother or your wife, right? Going on, so I look back and I think, you know what? Screw everything else. Screw all the other music. That stuff I made was really cool. If anything, I'm probably going to research that and like look at it and try to bring that back to you know, whenever I can make music again to that. To the future, right? Bring the past back to the future because I think there are stuff I some stuff I made was amazing, and it almost got too boring now. But of course, it be, it's become more. Um, if I made my music more boring, it would probably start to sell. It probably start to be on like you know, you look like a radio station, like an electronic music radio station or something. Uh, like, I mean, like an internet one. Yeah, I'm not talking about like some some boomer ass like actual radio station like. Unless you're in a car. I mean, even people in a car probably just use YouTube. You know, everything's online nowadays. So, you know what I mean, right? <clears throat> Maybe I could succeed there and probably wouldn't make much money, but I could, right? And potentially, if I really tried to do it. But um, I don't really care now. Like, that's the thing. Uh, I, I've got to a point where if I make music, it's usually for a project. Or maybe I'll just make an album out of the blue. And uh, you know what? My, the albums that I've released on this channel which I'm, these aren't the old ones I'm talking about. Um, uh, there's some all right stuff. There's some kind of not so all right stuff, some maybe painful to listen to stuff, but um, I'm comfortable with it. You know, I'm okay with it. Now when I draw pictures, I'm okay. I'm not over judging myself. Now, admittedly, I know basic anatomy. I know basic perspective. I know how to color things properly. I know how to make a scene. I know how to make, you know, basic things work, right? So I'm not really judging myself on that as so much. I can usually get what I want down on the paper. It's just kind of how it is. And of course, sometimes it can be good to judge yourself to, you know, if you want to improve your technical skills, it, it can be good. But too much judging of yourself is not going to get anything done. There was that, that experiment, I don't know if it was real or not, but they had a class of students make one pottery pot out of clay in like a month. And they had another class make 30 of them you know, each day in a month, right? And the class that made 30 was infinitely better at pottery and their pots were better than the class that spent a month to make one. The point being is that the more you practice, the better you get. Now, of course, eventually you might want to get to a point where you want to put a lot of effort into something. And there are certain pe people who are more mentally dominant and very intelligent that will usually want to put a lot more effort into things. People who are more mundane and physical, which again, there's nothing wrong if you are more mon mundane and physical. It means you have a stronger earth element. If anything, you will succeed better than people who are more intelligent. <laughs> That's how it works. People who are intelligent get kind of screwed over. You know, people who are mentally dominant do not succeed as much in this world, but they are generally the 1% sometimes. That's kind of how it works. It's like they're the 1% and the bottom percent. So to speak. They're the top and the bottom, while well, the mundane people are usually the middle. But going on, in general, if you want to make things more rounded and more mundane and more palatable, more generic, you just keep mass manufacturing. Just keep doing, 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 doing. Draw a picture, rip it. Draw a picture, you know, it's not actually rip it, but you know what I mean. Like, draw it, flip, flip it to the next page. Draw, flip it to the next page. Do it again and again and again. You the woodworking, you make a table. Make it another table, make a third table, make a fourth table, make a table every single week and you're going to get really good at making tables. And you know what? Then you're going to take that on to everything else. And then if you want to really hone in, you think, well, I want to make some tables with special joints. I don't want to use nails. I don't want to use screws. You know, I don't know. Maybe you want to test different varnishes. Maybe you want to use like a block of lard or butter or something. <laughs> instead of like a regular bar varnish or you want to use like an oil you, know, you want to start being more specific that's fine that increases you know that increases your understanding of everything 
And then you might want to go back to just mass manufacturing that new kind of table that you've made, right? I don't know if that was what I was trying to get for this video, but it's, I think that was a good, I think we had a good run. As I said, you need to be comfortable with failure and people who have been traumatized and have been like essentially emotionally abused for failure usually happen from their parents um, or their teachers. And it's because these people are afraid of failure and they do not allow you to fail. You need to be encouraged to fail. If you have children, you need to say, I want you to practice this. I, I don't care if you like failure should not be a thing that is like thought of as like, oh, geez, this big pitfall. I'm going to step in lava. It's just it's just a natural thing. You know, if you take a drive, sometimes there's a there's a pit hole. Sometimes there's a rock on the road. Sometimes there's just. Um, you know, nothing's going to be perfect usually. You know, sometimes you get that perfect, like it's late afternoon, it's nice and warm, beautiful, no one's on the road, you know, it's just like it's a week, maybe it's a weekend or something, I don't know. And you just have that perfect trip, right? Where it's like at night and just no one there and you can just like be comfortable and say, like, oh, it's lovely, right? That's not every day. You can't oh. have a strong emotional reaction to it. And the way you get through this, because usually it's a, it's a lack of earth, um, because the opposite, the opposite is someone who who is too earthly and they do not apply enough intelligence and enough pain because it's from the nervous system is pain. That's from, from the high, people who are hyper precise, who are perfectionist. They are like essentially electrocuting themselves. So the opposite of people who do not do that enough, who do not use enough focus, enough precision, enough um, over, you know, over what do you call it um they're not perfectionistic enough and their work fails because it never becomes all that good because they are not it's like someone um usually in the past you would you would have the idea of a self-taught person who wasn't the you they would say they're not very good because they didn't have a trainer that was strict enough you know to like guide them so their work was sloppy and that's not always true Depends on the person who was there, but usually that was a stereotype. Or the person who was trained, you know, they had a lot more stress. They had a lot more, um, you know, they had to live up to a lot more expectations. You have to become your own trainer. So as I said, the opposite is someone who's too earthly, he's too lazy, he's too kind of sloppy and rounded um, with all this stuff. It, it's too much you know, negative energy or yin energy. Well, the, the person who's too strict, who's too nervous system dominant, who, who focuses too hard, is too yang or positive or, you know, as I said, nervous system dominant, so body dominant. But I would assume a lot of people listening to this are, again, if, if you actually, if you're younger, you usually you can be more, less rounded out. I don't know, at least when I got older, I became more body dominant. Well, when I was younger, I was hyper mentally dominant to the point where as i said with my music i kind of miss sometimes because i used to think i was a complete failure and to an extent i guess i was in like you know certain regards but now that i look back on my stuff i wasn't a failure um if anything i was better than i was now like at playing musical instruments i can't play the violin like i used to when i was younger i'm stretching my hands that far uh, because of how you know how big all my my muscles and all this stuff. I mean, I'm sure I could you know if I played it every day and I really stretched, but it's just so unnatural. I mean, the violin's a very unnatural instrument. It's, I don't I don't really recommend it. Uh, the cello is a better one. For my body type cello would work better, or even maybe double bass, but they're a bit too big, so <laughs> um, you know, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. But a uh, point being is that you know uh, the 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 pig looks at the fox and envies the fox for how skinny and lovely its coat is and how red and you know lovely and striking and beautiful and sharp its facial features and ears are and the fox looks at the pig and envies or the boar and envies how thick and strong rugged and rigid it is and how just like domineering of a creature it is the grass is always greener i guess is the positive person looks at the negative person and and envies them you know it's, it's the same way if when i was younger it was all about like skinny people were seen to be beautiful right were seen to be hot because a hot person is a hot 
natured, a hot metabolism, a hot disposition. That's why they call it hot. And that's why they are skinny, because they have a fast metabolism, you know, maybe a lot of stimulants, and that person is positively orientated. They're more focused on maybe um, heart and head, right? While people who are thicker, fatter, maybe bigger, you know, and such, um, maybe thicker, not just, uh, what do you call it, fat-wise, could be muscle, could be, you know, just stout bodies and such, were thought to be unattractive. And of course, as I got older, I found women who are thicker to be more attractive, right? And as I was, when I was skinny, I thought women who were skinnier and kind of more cuter and such um, were more, you know, more attractive. So it's like, depending on your body type um, is what you will find, depending on your own disposition is what you'll find attractive, right? But nowadays it's like, there was almost a shift where, um, or, or in the past it was like, you know, thicker women were, because it's like a sign of, of like wealth i guess and also i imagine depends on the culture see the more mature culture is going to want more developed women i would assume or maybe it's even the opposite you know, who knows <laughs> who knows it could also be a, a masculine a feminine different you know culture they'll want different types of men and women right and it's almost like when i was younger but here's the opposite when i was younger and skinny um, i wasn't you know attractive like, I didn't get, I didn't, you know, I didn't get a girlfriend. Like, girls weren't really interested in me, right? Some of them, to an extent, but nothing really happened, or nothing happened, right? Now that I'm older, and I'm more muscular and thicker, right, skinny guys are seemingly attractive. Because everyone's kind of become more nervous system dominant. Well, when I was younger, people weren't nervous system dominant because they weren't using technology as much. Technology hadn't changed people. So I was like an alien uh like a I, i've always been like 10 years ahead of everything uh for better and for worse really but um so it's like everything jumped in opposites you know everything just went in opposites it's like yeah guys who are kind of muscular aren't really i guess attractive but also at the same regard assumably to women who are you know thicker um and have more hope because really a thicker woman usually is a more hormonally active woman like a stronger hormonally hormonal woman she got more more like more juice pumping out of the ovaries essentially while a man who's got more muscles has got more testosterone kind of pumping out of his nuts essentially you know it's more, more like stronger kidneys right like attracts like but i'm not going to talk about my my non-existent <laughs> my dot existed love life <laughs> Uh, one day, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. Once I start making videos about, like, the nature of women. Admittedly, I have a few videos about that. Um, talking about, you know, some, uh, some crazy shit. No, I think I've, I've, I've not released a couple because they were pretty fucking heavy. Like, when we start talking about, like, the dark nature of women, it's, it gets pretty fucking heavy. At least, I don't know. I feel like it's very socially unacceptable because, like, feminism... And it just kind of like shielded women's dark sides. I don't want to focus on women's dark sides. You know, I'm 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 of the belief that there are good women out there. You know, there there, there definitely are, right? So I, this isn't like a you know, this isn't like a, it's, it's like it's like it's kind of cringy for a woman to be like, oh, all men is shit. Like, no, you're you're a bit fucking head. But um, <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So I'll leave, it, I'll leave it there before I dig myself deeper into this bloody hole. <laughs> Old style spirituality is to deny the physical. Now, spirituality in general is the teachings of the upper archetypes, the upper, upper elements, organs and such, relating, of course, to your nervous system, and partially to your lungs and heart. So in the past, a lot of spirituality was to reach this mind, to reach enlightenment, peak, the crown of the head, where you start to see weird colours and lights, and you start to open up and become nothing, question everything. You reach almost a point of infinity. 
and people do all kinds of interesting practices and diets and such to reach this point. Now, I think in the future there will be an integration of both the masculine and the feminine, the lower body, the organs that we think are dirty, foul, abhorrent, physical, you know, the bowels, the bladder, the genitals, the belly, you know, all these physical things which encompass, you know, lust, desires, anger, maybe aggression, jealousy, you know, the dark, and, well, they're not all bad, you know, we need some of these things to survive. Hunger gets you to eat and fuel yourself, right? It's not such a bad thing, but it is a phys more physical leaning kind of emotion, right? Uh, so the old spirituality was very positively orientated, very masculine, uh, very heavenly. And the I think what we need to integrate is the feminine side, which is of understanding you know, the earth, the water, nature, society, people, money even, you know, material goods, family, having families and children, you know, having houses and such. We can integrate spirituality and you know, harmoniousness and goodness into all of these things. We can purify you know, business, for example, food, politics. All Many of these things are corrupted. They are, you know, most people are stressed at their work. Most people are dissatisfied with politicians. Food is full of you know, additives which are not so nice. People's families are shattered their homes may be not so clean and fixed up you know their physical lives their physical bodies we can integrate good nature into this we can integrate good intentions help beauty harmony in the same way that we did spiritually and i think that is bringing them together it looking at things, the world around you, the people around you, your house, your possessions and such, and think and seeing them for what they are, and seeing if they are good or bad for you, seeing if they're healthy or not healthy for you, and doing the best to bring some kind of harmony, health, proper order to your life. And of course, you know, the harsh reality is that Sometimes you will just have to struggle. Sometimes you will just have to be inharmonic, disharmonic, unhealthy for a while to sort things out. Sometimes you have to go through the purging process of toxins and such. You just have to sit with your emotions, your heaviness, your worries, your guilt, your fear, your shame and such. And sometimes... You need to accept the things you've done or have happened to you. In the darkest of your traumas, you sometimes all you can do is accept them. All you can do is accept the horrible things that happened to you or you could have even done. And until you do that, until you can come to a point of acceptance wholeheartedly, that's when you can really start to change things instead of ignoring them. Oh, you know, a lot of these spiritual people want to believe that everything will just work out and just be okay and that they're not the body and that, you know, it's just the spiritual experience and all this stuff, but they're not accepting reality. They're not accepting the bad things, physical things mostly. So... Be careful about becoming excessively spiritual the same way that it is a little dangerous to become excessively physical. Now, of course, we have to go through phases. Metal must be heated until it is red hot, molten, and then it is hammered and cooled. You, when you become very spiritual, are being heated up. You're, kind of, you're glowing, and then when you become physical and dense, you are cooling. You've been thrown in the bucket of water of reality, which is the troublesome 
trauma is horrible world which is out here but you have to learn to negotiate with it and manage through it manage it manage yourself while in it if you get what i'm saying you got to learn to work with it unfortunately it's like raw materials you can fix things but the thing that you fix may not be the thing you want you can scrap things but the materials you get from scrapping things may not be what you want if you buy something usually you get what you want but it comes at a price you can combine all these things together and ultimately you kind of just have to work with what you can get otherwise you have to work to get more of what you want to get to get what i mean work is really the embodiment of physical life in society it's kind of peculiar because it it work is almost a middle class thing because it requires you to have a stable enough home to the point where you can go out and do that but it's almost a very lower it's it's a routine and pattern thing you're essentially a robot cog in the machine doing something but denying work denying society and all this stuff is not going to help you unfortunately i know we all struggle and work is horrible and hard when it is horrible and hard i'm sure if you know if you had a lovely nice job pretty good you know of course it's like it's, you're an eight hour slave but you still you know still doing something you like be nice right all this non-duality junk and uh all this it's really just people maybe doing a bit too much meditation, be doing a bit too many uh, psychedelic substances, getting too far up in their brains, and then they just associate themselves completely with the spirit, with the consciousness, which is the en- most energetic part of yourself. Now, you are also the body. The body is the coagulation or the physical form of the soul. Meaning the physical body is the physical form of the energetic spiritual part of you. Tomorrow's you will become yesterday's you. And the opposite is people who get so traumatized in an opposite way that instead of disassociating from the body, they disassociate from the spirit. They become soulless automatons. These people are nothing but in the world. They always want to be out doing something in society. They cannot rest. They cannot sleep. They need pills too. They cannot detach. They have to keep stimulating the adrenal glands and the kidneys or else they collapse. And sleep is probably not something that really happens for these people i don't know the point of the video is that if you think you can just be in your heart see the heart is it's like the combustion area of the hot air balloon or something or would it be more like the hot air balloon hot air storage area i don't know Point being, it draws the lower energies from the you know, the, the kidneys and bladder and, and such, and the lower organs, and the heart transmutes it upwards, right? It's like a it's like a a, a, an, a high amperage to excuse me, it's a it's a high voltage low amperage transformer. So you're transforming things to a higher voltage. You know what I mean by that? You're you're subtilizing. You're just burning. You're, you're boiling water into steam. And what happens when you continuously burn water, boil water into steam is that you burn the pot. You, you don't have any water. So your stability while being in that spiritual, airy state is you're draining everyone around you. Similarly, a person who's overly physical is draining everyone energetically around them. They're always trying to ask people, and like instead of looking something up on the internet, to learn they're always just trying to like get it from everyone you know even, even though when it's like a thing that they can obviously do themselves well they're always trying to get people to do stuff from so anyway the heart people are draining stability from others 
eventually your money's going to run dry. If you don't work and earn money, um, somehow, you know, you don't, you don't have enough funds coming in that you're, you know, you're spending too much, whatever, um, eventually you're going to run dry. Same thing if you're in your heart all the time, eventually your lower body is going to run dry. You can't take stimulants all the time and not crash. Eventually you will crash. Eventually the, the stimulant will cause you to relax. <laughs> it will produce the opposite effect. And then those people crash down pretty hard. So usually, I mean, look, it depends on how much money they have. Like a lot of, here's, here's the thing. A, a, a good handful of successful people are probably, they probably got a lot of money coming in from other places. You know, parents, maybe they got lucky, you know, crypto or something like that. But money's going to come from somewhere. You know, we all have to eat. We all have to live. Somehow, something is funding someone, right? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta look at like where's the in and out. Like if you if you're looking at a business, you you're a business trying to get a loan from a bank. The bank's like, give us all the money you're making. Like show us all the money. Show us everything. It's it's like back in the when like Instagram and and like all this normal people's social media was a thing and you'd always have like fitness models and all this stuff um and you gotta think you know who has the time to like spend all these hours at the gym you know i'm not talking about you know if you're a person who exercises like you know regularly that's a good thing man it's good for you i'm talking about people who spend like six hours at the gym <laughs> like it's their social life it's like their life there are people who do that, you know, there are people, and hey, look, if they're making money off it, best to them, you good on you, but, um, I feel like, it's like that, uh, so I think it was Malcolm in the Middle, there's a scene, um, where all the bodybuilders now, like, as long as that social security money keeps coming in, then we're gonna, you know, spend all, like, eight hours out here in, like, uh, what's that, like, Muscle Beach or whatever in California, I think it might have been, or some gym, I guess it's almost like if you want to listen to someone's advice, look at their life, right? You know, I'll be honest, my life's not, you know, I'm not, I'm not there yet. Like, that's the truth. I've, I've, I've fucked up a lot. So I've learned from my mistakes. I, I really have. And, um, I've spent a lot of time in the underground, so to speak. You know, people look at me, people who, who are status seeking look at me and they don't really have much respect for me, but they they like me <laughs> they like me because i am nice and friendly and charismatic and i've got good energy and all this stuff which is what i've earned from you know health and lifestyle and this stuff so it's like almost like their their mind is telling them this person you know don't respect them or don't you know because like they're low status or whatever but it's like everything else is like telling them like yes like, I like this. I like this person. It's like, I like being around. <laughs> While the opposite is true. It's like, if you're around someone who's really high status, who didn't earn it, or, you know, maybe, I don't know, they kind of got given it or whatever. It's like, you kind of, you get this feeling of like, hmm. It's like, it's like a brain surgeon, right? You think a brain surgeon is like the cheat code to status. You, know, you want to be the highest status person in the world be a brain surgeon right every you see you you bring that out at like a dinner table and people are like wow you know damn but, but what if that person's like a like a like a dead fish you know it's just a just an absolute like it's like eating chalk when talking to them it's just it's kind of yeah, kind of boring i guess i would imagine if you spent seven years in university and you genuinely studied hard you're either going to be the most boring person or maybe the most interesting. I don't know. I mean, you'd have to be a freak to do that. Like in some sense of the word, like a good or a bad freak. <laughs> I don't think normal people do that. You, you've got to be kind of screwed up in some way. Again, good or bad. No, I all have a lot of spite. Now that I say that, I remember someone who, I don't think their kids are going to be brain, I don't know if they're brain surgeon or whatever, but they're, you know, studying for a doctor. So it's like people can, if, you know, if you've got a lot of support, 
support ha helping you out then you can be you know you can be a praying third you without being freak i'm sure but you know you get the point you get if you personally you're just like 30 or 40 and just one day just like decide hey i'm gonna put myself through seven years of this it's like yeah you got you got you you need to be a brain surgeon to operate on yourself and maybe a psychologist as well <laughs> i'm only joking Partially, I don't know. There's there's truth to every joke, I think. Ugh, anyway, this really summarizing point of the video is that like a lot of these, I I like watching these. I'm a bad person some of the time. I'm not well, you know. I'm a. I watch some of these people just to like. I don't want to say feel better about myself because it's not like I'm so like, barring this shit that is like I don't, I'm not petty, you know. I'm not petty. I don't need like. I don't need to bully people, I don't need to, like, feel better about myself by, you know, looking at losers or something. It's just, I just look at them to, like, almost remind myself of what I was and to see where these people are. And, like, I like to watch the, the growth of people, you know. I like to watch the, it's like if you watch a show where there's lots of character development and it's not forced or cringy or something, I think that's really interesting and nice. And it almost, like, reminds you of your own development and i like to watch some of these times I, I some of these people i like to just check them out every so often just to like see how they're going and how they're developing and eventually what always happens is that they start to go through you know they start to go through the other parts of the cycle eventually sunshine turns into darkness and, and then darkness turns back in, you know, into sunshine well you know it's it, it's like twilight you never really get that light back, though. Who knows? You know, I think one day you could, if um, if you really work towards it. But it comes, you know, it becomes like twilight, where it's not quite. You get you get light, but it's um, it's always got that darkness in it now, yeah, so to speak. 